So in some previous videos, we looked at a circuit similar to this quite a good bit. It is simply just a DC circuit. It is just showing a representation of a flow coming from a positive to a negative terminal. We call DC as a battery. So it is DC or direct current. We're just showing the one direction of travel for the flow or what we call current. So today we're gonna to take a look at AC and DC. DC meaning typically fr from batteries. It could even be a rechargeable battery. It can be from my power supply that sits on the bench here because it's taking AC and making DC. But when we talk about a DC or a direct current, we're just talking about a flow in one direction. So just as represented here, from a positive to a negative flow. My flow meter's not going to work now. Here we go. We show the flow in one direction. Well, what we use in our house when you plug up to an outlet, of course, is AC or alternating current. So what is the difference? So if we take AC or alternating current, and we actually looked at the flow of current. We can think about it as going back and forth, not direct, not in a straight line. North America is 60 hertz, but a lot of other places in the world is 50 hertz. But the same thing, it's either 50 or in our case, 60 times per second. The flow is actually going one direction and then back. But that's what we're doing. We're going back and forth. So think about that back and forth motion as we draw it how it would look on the oscilloscope. And we're going to get to that real world look at the oscilloscope shortly. But just to talk about it just a minute, an AC signal coming from the power company or generator. If we were to draw like a screen on our oscilloscope, an oscilloscope is simple. We know how to use a meter, or we will get into using a meter more in the future if it need to be on, a, on an episode. But just something as simple as a meter showing a voltage, that's all we're doing with an oscilloscope. It's got a lot more complex functions it can do. But we're basically just looking at the amplitude of a signal over a duration or a time. So we just have a time here and let's just say in this case voltage here and we're looking at this and whatever deviational period in time we're looking at it and if we take this screen and we'll say that this is a zero voltage reference we're just going to look at a single phase sine wave here it's going to come up from zero go fully positive back to zero fully negative back up that is one complete wave it will continue on doing the same thing but say this is checking um, right at an outlet in the United States just 120 volts 60 Hertz outlet so this is going to be happening 60 Hertz or 60 times a second 120 volts and that's going to be RMS roots mean square so this peak up here is probably going to be around 170 volts and down here is going to be about a negative 170 volts and we're just going to sweep through this of course being zero and when you saw me going back and forth that's exactly what's going on is from the power company or generator the voltage as the as the rotating field is building a voltage that's what's happening 60 times a second it's going fully peak and it's, and it's a, a complete perfect sine wave that makes a complete 360 degree cycle of a complete rotation of a generator. So it builds up fully, comes back down, and the magnetic field builds again, fully negative, because it's traveling the other direction, and back again. Now if we take the same, the same oscilloscope, or the same principle on the oscilloscope, with a DC line, we'll do it in blue. If it's going to be a battery, a really clean DC, or a really clean um, power supply even, it's going to be almost a straight line with this being zero. And maybe it's a 24 volt supply. So we up here at 24 volts. 
and it should be clean and straight. It should just be in one direction. And that's the basic difference between AC and DC. Of course, Edison wanted everything to be DC. His light bulbs were designed for DC. He wanted DC generators. Of course, Tesla was the one pushing AC, and of course he won. Being picked up by Westinghouse, Tesla was definitely the genius when it come to AC, especially with the three-phase power. So as far as from the generation plant, it's gonna look something more similar to this. See, more like this. So in three phase generation, there are three phases that are 120 electrical degrees out of phase. Industrial plant, large commercial places do get the full three phase. Small commercial and especially residential here, we just, we just get the single phase. We do get 240 volts brought to our house. It's just one single phase of it. Three phase, usually designated as Three phase is in, uh, like I say, industry, large uh, plants I typically work at. But Tesla come up with the uh, idea for AC and uh, it pretty much transformed how things are. AC works with being able to transform. You can do uh, step up the very high voltage and transmission lines as which we see in this video here. Large transmission lines that can actually transmit at maybe 100,000 volts, you know, high voltage, and step it back down at transformers. Typically, you see them on a pole in uh, neighborhoods like I live in, and uh, cities, you start seeing them just the green boxes actually close to the yard where they actually step it down to 120 volts to come into your house. So, generated goes back and forth, positive to negative sweeping at 60 cycles per second. DC, straight line. But can we convert one to the other? Well, sure we can. It's, it's pretty easy to take AC and make DC. Uh, power supplies do it all the time. We can take power supplies to charge batteries, of course, and we can use batteries, really pure and uh, clean DC. We can have really clean power supplies. We can have linear supplies, switch mode supplies. Can we take DC and go to AC? Yes, yeah, it's hard to be efficient, but sure, we have inverters and change the DC to AC for us if we need to. Again, it's, it's not terribly efficient, but, but it does work. So when it comes to AC to DC, this is just a quick example of an AC input going across what we call a bridge rectifier, which is four diodes. It can be four individual diodes. It can be a, a little block, a little bridge rectifier block. But we can take our AC in and we can come across four diodes in this configuration and we can get a plus and a minus where current only goes in one direction. Now we're not gonna get into it that deep with this video. In the next video, we'll look more into actually rectifying DC from AC. We'll go in a little more detail about this and we'll actually look at it with a oscilloscope. So this was just a little quick video about AC and DC and the differences. AC being household and DC more of a battery or DC power supply. So just learning the differences as we go forward. So I hope you liked the episode. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.